Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my video tutorial for single cell RNA sequencing data integration in Scampi. In my previous video, I showed you how to integrate data set using BBKNN. Today, I'm going to show you another method called ingest for data integration. You can read the details about the ingest function from the online Scampi data integration tutorial. So the ingest function is different from BBKNN. BBKNN integrate data from data set network not analyzed before. But for ingest, mapping is a better word than integration. Because to use ingest, we need to use an annotated data set as a reference data set. Then map and analyze the data set using the clusters information from the reference data set. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the ingest function in Scampi and map new data set to an annotated data set. So let's use the Jupyter Notebook to do the analysis. So first we need to load all the packages. Next, we set some parameters for the data analysis. So I'm going to use the data set that we integrated using the BBKNN function. You can watch my data integration video tutorial for the BBKNN function. In that video, we analyze the three single cell RNA sequencing data set for healthy human lung from three different donors. And we annotated the cell types and saved the data set. So let's read the data set as a reference data. Then we can use the plot function to have a look at the cell clusters. So you can see, we have eight cell clusters in the data set. We annotated four immune cell clusters, immune zero, immune three, immune five, and six. We have one cell cluster as endothelial cells, one cell cluster as mesenchymal cells, and the two cell clusters Canaster 2 and canaster 7 as epithelial cells. So we can use this data set as our annotated reference data set. So next we can read the single cell RNA sequencing data set for the healthy human lung from the GSE 128033 data set. In this data set, they have five normal healthy human donors. For the demonstration purpose, we, we just read the three data set in. If you want to practice use this data set, you can download the data from GSE 128033. Here I just named the normal data set 1, normal data set 2 and 3. So let's read the data set in for the first donor. And we make the genes unique. Then for the second donor, and make the genes unique again. Next we can read the third donor, and make the gene unique. Now we can um, use the concatenate function to merge all three data set as one and name the A data. 
So next have a look at the a data. You can see there are no cell cells in this data set and uh, we have more than 33,000 genes in the data set. We analyzed this data set before. We knew there are not so no quality cells in this data set. If we perform the quality control for this data set to keep cells have at least 200 gene expression and keep genes that express the least in three cells, then we calculate the mitochondria DNA percentages. So now we can use the wiring plot to have a look at the N genes by counts, total counts, and the mitochondria DNA percentage. So you can see a uh, majority of cells in this data set have N gene below 5,000 and the total count is below uh, 30,000 and the mitochondria DNA percentage are below 20%. So we can use those parameters to subset the cells for quality control. So we can have a look at the wiring plot again. You can see now we only keep the cells have N gene below 5,000, total count below 30,000, and the percentage of mitochondria DNA below 20%. We can have a look at the A data again. You can see now we only have 9,775 cells and 19,850 genes. So we get rid of not so cells and the genes after the quality control. Because we are going to use the uh, A data reference data set as a reference data set, we can have a look at uh, the A data reference data set. You can see in this data set, we have more than 11,000 cells and more than 20,000 genes. To perform the mapping use the ingest function, we need to use the gene names that are presented in both data set. So we know the variable names are gene names. Then we can use the intersection function to identify genes that are presented in both data set, A data reference and the A data set. So let's create a new file name and the name of the variable names. Now we can have a look at the variable names. You can see uh, they are genes and uh, we only have 18,934 genes. And then those genes are presented in both data set. So now for the mapping, we need to subset both data set using the variable names with 18,934 genes. We only keep those genes for both data set, A data reference and A data. So let's have a look at the A data reference. You can see now we only have 18. 1934 genes in this data set, but we have the same amount of the cells. And for the A data, you can see we kept the same amount of cells, but the, but the total genes are the same as the reference data set, 18,934 genes. So now we can perform a uh, standard workflow analysis in Scampi to see the cell clusters and the batch effect from the new data set. We normalize the data, then log uh, rhythmize the data 
find the variable genes, then perform PCA labels and the UMAP analysis, and finally we use the Leiden method to find the cell clusters in this new data set, and we use the same resolution 0 0.05 as the reference data set. So now we finish the standard workflow analysis, we can have a look at the cell clusters in the new data set. You can see with resolution 0 0.05, we have five cell clusters in the new data set. If you see the cell color from the different batches, you can see there are batch effect among three different data set because the color for the cells from different data set orange, green, and blue they are not integrated very well for the same cell clusters. So now we have the uh, reference data set and we created a new data set and we know there are patch effect in the new data set and also the shape of the cell clusters are different from the reference data set. Now we can use the ingest function to map the new data set to our reference data set. And we know from both the data set the, the observation for the cell clusters are latent clusters. So let's run the ingest function. Okay, so uh, through the ingest function, we mapped the new data to the annotated reference data set. Let's have a look at the A data reference now. You can see from the unstructured observations, we find the cell clusters use the Naden method. So the color for each cell canaster was labeled as laden colors. It will be the same for the new data set. You can see the color will be laden colors. And also we have the batchy colors for the new data set and here for the reference data set. But we want to see the cell canasters in the new data set. So let's fix the data set and use the same color from the reference data set for the new data set. So now we are ready to see the cell clusters in the new data set. We can use the plot function to plot the cell clusters from the reference data set and also plot the cell clusters from the new data set after mapping the new data set to the reference data set. And also we can see if we corrected the batch effect or not in the new data set. So let's run the plot function. You can see now we have three plots here. Here is the cell canasters for the reference data set. We have eight cell canasters and then they have different colors. Here are the cell canasters in the new data set. You can see after mapping the shape of cell canasters in the new data set are changed. You can see we have the same color blue for the immune cells zero 
red color for the immune cell canastus ray, and the orange color for the endocellular cells, purple color for the mesenchymal common cells, and the green color for the epithelial cells, and then they are in the same position. But in the new data set, we don't have the immune cell canasters 5, 6, and the epithelial cell canaster 7. And in this figure, you can see uh, the cells are labeled by their batch color for three different uh, donors. Now you can see the cells actually integrated very well in, in each cell canaster. So to use the ingest function, you need a annotated data set. But the advantage of using this method, you can see, you can always produce the same shape and the same color for the new data set as your reference data set. This is great for your data analysis if you have a well annotated reference data set for future analysis. Any new data set, you can create cell canasters to have the same color, the same shape as the reference data set. At the same time, you corrected the batch effect from different samples or data set produced by different sequencing technologies. So I finished today's demonstration to show you how to use the ingest function to, to map your new data set to an annotated reference data set. I hope this video can help your data analysis. Please subscribe my channel if you haven't to do so. Hope to see you in my next video tutorial. Thank you and see you next time.